Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be talking about the relationship between alkalinity and nitrates and phosphates within your reef tank. Now, over the last what couple weeks, I've been dialing in the nutrients to the 300 gallon reef. And I mentioned this in a previous video, there's been uh, you know a lot going on. I haven't been taking care of the system the way I should. And I went ahead and made some adjustments because I was at zero nitrates and phosphates. We're gonna walk around a little bit because it's really blue and I don't think you guys wanna look at it uh, before we get over to the computer. But anyway, um, I went ahead and made some uh, adjustments with my nitrates and phosphates and basically went from zero to relatively high numbers in a short period of time. And I wanna talk about what happened to the reef tank when it comes to the alkalinity consumption because it actually caught me off guard and thankfully I do have the Trident and I was able to catch it early and make some adjustments and not kill my reef tank. So let's go and move over to the computer here. And also I wanna make the video because my buddy Jack actually is going through the exact same thing. The dude is uh, rolling zero nitrates and phosphates for a while. He just started dosing uh, and uh, he noticed that his alkalinity consumption pretty much stopped. And uh, we're going to talk about that. So <clears throat> let me clear my throat because apparently it's still allergy season. But anyways, over here, I'm going to kind of have to use my left hand. Um, we're looking at the Trident. Actually, we're looking at the Apex with the Trident numbers. And we're looking at the calc um, dosing that I have here and the calcium reactor. So if you're new to the channel, I actually use a Avast Marine uh, uh, calc reactor. All right. And I also use a Geo's calcium reactor for um, calcium alkalinity needs because we have the tub here, the 300 gallon display, and these two low boys, which this one's kind of empty right now, that we're growing colonies out, out on. So if you're wondering why those two items are showing on the graph here, uh, there you go. So anyway, so we have the graph here from uh, the uh, July 20th through the 27th. And uh, let me show you guys what's going on here. So um, up until this point, I was staying around nine uh, DKH. It was pretty common. Usually, like dip, dip down a little bit, like maybe you know, just a slightly under nine five or under nine, and then you know, maybe up to nine five every once in a while. But generally, that's where I stayed at, and it's pretty consistent. Uh, during this whole time, I was at zero nitrates and phosphates um, because, again, I wasn't paying attention to the tank, and you know, there's a million excuses. But the reality is, I wasn't taking care of the system the way I should, and I was at zero nitrates and phosphates. Now I really, I really caught it because I started noticing some paleness. I'm like, oh man, what the heck? So uh, you know, tested zero zero and uh, had to make some changes. So up to this point, I was dosing approximately. I have to do the math. I have to look again, but it's, it was probably closer to maybe 10,000 milliliters of calc per day, uh, something like that, between five and 10,000. And that's what these green lines indicate. Here is what I was dosing. Um, and then uh, you can see that I tested my phosphates, and we'll talk about that here. So. Basically, I was at zero, 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 and then I tested one day and was like, oh crap, man, I need to make some adjustments to this ASAP. So I went over here and grabbed my trusty bottles and I just dumped them in. Not the whole gallon, okay, but I did dump in quite a bit into the sump. And then I was like, all right, well, that sounds good. We got 500 gallons. What's, what's a couple hundred milliliters of uh, nitrates and phosphates really gonna do? Well, anyways, this is what it did. <laughs> right there 1.12 phosphates i was like oh wow that's pretty high <laughs> so i went from zero to 1.12 pretty quick and as you guys can see with that my alkalinity started going up so again man i gotta turn let me turn off the green here because i can't click on anything so we're going to turn off the uh calc real quick so you can see here that um you know we tested and my alkalinity was relatively good and, uh, and I still can't click on it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Anyways, um, let me click off, there we go. So anyways, here we go. So we were basically at nine, you can see. And then when I tested, you know, we were at uh, 1.12 at nine. And then slowly you can see over the next couple of days, the alkalinity went up pretty good. So we, what are we at here? Um, this is kind of irritating. 8.87, and this was at uh, 12 o'clock at night on the 24th. And then on the 25th at uh, noon, we were at 9.56, which is a pretty big jump. And I knew something was off at that point uh, just because I do kind of monitor monitor the Trident throughout the day just to make sure. And I noticed that um, that it went up. So I was like, okay, let me make some adjustments. So at this point, I started uh, looking at the calc reactor thinking maybe I should increase it a little bit. So I did. Usually I keep it at about a 6.5. Four to 6.5 and I started increasing it letting it get to uh, 6.7 and making adjustments basically bringing the pH up in the calc reactor or calcium reactor making it so that the media doesn't dissolve as quickly hopefully limiting the alkalinity spike now let me go ahead and turn the calc back on 
and you can see what I did as well. I went ahead and actually dialed down the calc reactor at the same time, and uh, you can see here I actually just turned it off on the, 20, on the 25th. I just turned it off altogether because it wasn't uh, helping and the alkalinity was still going up. So what I'm getting to here is uh, even with adjusting the, uh, these levels here, the, it was still going up, meaning that the increased nitrates and phosphates within a reef tank cause coral to stop growing. Now, for whatever reason, I haven't dove into it. I did a little bit of research on Reef to Reef, but uh, a lot of people are saying that you know the polyp extension, which I didn't pay attention to, and in hindsight, I would have looked, but they say that the polyp extension kind of stops, the coral stops growing because of the elevated nutrients or the adjustment um, in general. So uh, not only was it a spike from zero to really high, but I imagine if you had elevated nutrients in general, your alkalinity consumption, you know, if, if you were high like that, that it would end up uh, increasing. So, um, if you didn't make the adjustment. But anyways, hopefully that makes some sense. I know I'm bouncing around here, but either way, uh, what I noticed is that when I increased my nutrients and I didn't do anything else, my alkalinity went through the roof. I mean, it got up to what, 10.87 uh, in a very, very short period of time. What's that, uh, three days, something like that? Three days, that's that's a lot. <laughs> I don't like that. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't sit well. So I actually went ahead and turned off the calc reactor and I ended up turning off the calcium reactor for about three days while things adjusted and I let the alkalinity come back down. So um, one thing you guys, basically we'll sum up the video because I said it was gonna be quick and we're already freaking six minutes in. If you are making adjustments in your nutrients and you are at zero, if you're going to start dosing, make sure you keep an eye on your alkalinity. So if you have an SPS reef tank and you have a, say you're dosing 200 milliliters a day of two part, right? That's what you've been dosing for a while, you're at zero nutrients and you start dosing nitrates and phosphates, Keep an eye on your alkalinity because you might have to dial back your two-part dosing so you don't end up, um, you know, spiking your alkalinity. You know, going from nine to almost eleven in just a couple days, which is definitely not good. The tank was not happy. I did end up getting a little bit of STN on my um, uh, one of my torts, which you know it, it's bound to happen. I mean, that's a huge alkalinity spike in such a short period of time, and the tank is just not used to it. So. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully this video makes sense to you guys. And if you've experienced something like this, feel free to put that in the comment section. I know one other person, you know, Jack, he's going through the same thing. And um, based on what I read on Reef to Reef, it's pretty common. A lot of people have dealt with it. But this is my first time actually kind of just dumping it in and, and going from one extreme to the next. So I'm sure that didn't help. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Uh, sorry there's not a lot of content coming out right now. There's been a, It's been a really busy weekend. Maybe I will do a... Uh, uh, a podcast kind of talking about what I did this week and it was pretty it's pretty life I would say not altering but definitely something I've been needing to do for the majority of my life so I'm, I did it this weekend and um, we'll see we'll see, kind of see how that closure works out but anyways guys uh, quick walk around and uh, I got a, I got a few printers down <laughs> it's it's bound to happen so I mean I I'm just breaking stuff so anyways guys that's it for the video hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it made sense if it doesn't then I'm sorry. Other than that, I'll see you guys later, all right? Peace.